Our second day in Colorado started off with us being extremely distracted by the beautiful Rocky Mountains we saw on the way to Red Rocks Park and Amphitheater. We were so amazed. Prior to our visit, we had heard a lot about Red Rocks Amphitheater, and it definitely lived up to the hype. This place is absolutely gorgeous. Red Rocks is about 10 miles west of Denver and is in an open air amphitheater built into a rock structure. Construction of the amphitheater began in 1936 and was built with the help of the Civilian Conservation Corps and the Works Progress Administration. Red Rocks Amphitheater was the CCC's largest project. A crew of about 200 men at any one time lived in the barracks and worked on this theater for five years. The theater, stonework, and terracing were all built by hand without any machinery. The facility is absolutely stunning and it's surrounded by hiking trails. Despite the trails though, a lot of people choose to exercise on the steps of the amphitheater. We were super impressed by everyone's athleticism, especially since we were still trying to catch our breaths from walking up to the theater in the first place. They even do yoga on the rocks on the weekends in which hundreds of people perform yoga together at the amphitheater early in the morning. The park has a visitor center which describes the park's history and includes a list of every artist who's ever performed at the amphitheater. The amphitheater opened to the public in 1941, and Red Rocks has become a popular bucket list venue for musicians. Artists such as Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Nicks, and The Grateful Dead have played here, but the band that stuck out to us the most was The Beatles, since they are our favorite band. The Beatles played here on August 26, 1964 the only concert of theirs to not sell out during their U.S. tour. One thing to keep in mind when visiting Red Rocks is there are a lot of stairs. <laughs> it's a workout just to get around this place, but the park is gorgeous every step of the way. On our next stop, we're going to the Botanic Garden in Denver. And there was not a lot of parking over at the Botanic Gardens, so we had to park down the street at Congress Park. It's a little walk, so we'll be there in no time. We grabbed a quick bite to eat at the on-site cafe before exploring the gardens. The Denver Botanic Gardens opened in 1951. It's one of the most visited botanic gardens in the United States. Part of the gardens was built on top of a cemetery, although roughly 6,000 bodies were moved elsewhere to make way for the gardens and the neighboring Cheeseman Park, an estimated several hundred bodies still lie under the gardens and the park. The gardens are organized by theme, gardens of the West, internationally inspired gardens, ornamental gardens, shady gardens, and water gardens.
The highlight for us was the Monet pool. This water garden is inspired by Claude Monet's Water Lily series. There are 20 water lily hybrids at the Denver Botanic Gardens. We wish we had set aside more time to explore the gardens because it was way more expansive than we realized. We explored as much as we could before heading off to the Molly Brown House. So now we are at the Molly Brown House. And this is the home of the unsinkable Molly Brown who was on the Titanic and survived. She lived in Denver and we get to do a self-guided tour of her home. Molly Brown was an incredible woman, so incredible that it was honestly difficult to try to figure out what part of her history we wanted to highlight in this video because she did so much in her lifetime. Molly, whose real name was Margaret, used a lot of the money she and her husband, James Joseph Brown, earned through their mining business for philanthropic efforts. She worked in soup kitchens to assist miners' families, became a charter member of the Denver Women's Club, whose mission was to improve the lives of women by continuing their education and helped establish one of the United States' first juvenile courts. She drove ambulances during World War I, spoke five languages fluently, and ran for U.S. Senate in 1914. In 1912, she booked a last-minute passage on the Titanic to see her grandson. When the ship hit the iceberg, she flung into action, helping passengers onto lifeboats. Someone grabbed her hand and said, you are going to, and she was dropped into lifeboat number six. Her knowledge of foreign languages allowed her to console survivors who spoke little English. Before she and her fellow survivors even reached New York, Margaret worked with other first-class passengers to raise $10,000 to help the less fortunate passengers get on their feet. We could have done a whole video on Molly Brown alone, but we left information about her in our description if you want to learn more. After the house tour, we went for a hike at South Valley Park in Littleton, Colorado. We took the Coyote Song Trail, which is a three-mile loop trail. There's essentially no shade here, so we recommend going early in the morning or in the evening. The eastern side of the park includes red rock formations, whereas the western side has green foothills. The rocks get their red tint from oxidized iron minerals. Humans have apparently been using this area for over 10,000 years. A 10,000-year-old 10 Folsom Spear Point was even found in this park. just minding our own business, walking along, and came across what we think was a massive pile of bear poop. So uh, we're turning around and headed back to our car now. We're clearly out of shape. We're just blaming, <laughs> blaming on the altitude. Yeah, it's the altitude, yeah. <laughs> he was just being dramatic. All jokes aside, we loved hiking this trail and thought it was a perfect way to end the day. We'll be doing way more hiking in our next video.